Migrants camping in Belarus near the border with Poland have been moved to a nearby reception centre. More than a thousand people, mostly from the Middle East, had been living at a makeshift camp with the aim of entering the European Union. Belarus has been accused of pushing migrants to the border as revenge for EU sanctions, a charge it denies. Suzanne Kianpo reports. For weeks, a migrant crisis has unfolded on the Belarus-Poland border. Thousands freezing in the woods as a humanitarian situation spiraled into a political standoff. European Union countries have accused Belarus and its president, Alexander Lukashenko, of engineering the chaos, saying they've been flying in the migrants, pushing them to cross the border into the EU. On a trip to Nigeria, the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, backed his NATO allies. Profoundly um, unconscionable that um, Lukashenko and, and, uh, and Belarus have, have sought to weaponize migration. Now, Belarusian authorities have cleared the camps close to the Polish border, giving migrants the chance to charge phones, wash up and heat food, a move which could help to de-escalate tensions with Minsk and its backer, Moscow. Tensions may have cooled down for now, but NATO forces are wary of the country that calls the shots in this region, Russia. The UK Defense Secretary says he'll soon be sending more army engineers to the Polish frontier. We're going to be deploying some engineers to already augment the 150 soldiers that have been here uh, already for a good few months. Uh, because, again, you know, our defensive strength is that solidarity and standing side by side by the Poles saying, look, we know what's going on. This is a hybrid warfare. This is the use of people uh, being trafficked across the border by a sponsoring government effectively. Uh, and we're not going to allow that to happen. And here, the people caught in the middle returning to Iraq after their failed attempt to find a new life abroad. I don't regret returning, but I do regret that I believed the promises of the smugglers and that I dealt with immoral people that took advantage of us. I would have stayed till death, but my family were in danger. If the situation doesn't improve in Iraq, in a year or two I'd leave again. If there is no solution, I'll be forced to leave. For now, hundreds of migrants resettle into the home they left some with an eye to leave again, and others with hope of a fresh start. Suzanne Kiampor, BBC News.